Greetings, uh, Batavia Mayor Jeff Schelke speaking out on Monday, March the 6th, 2023. And I've got an announcement to make here. The Batavia, downtown Batavia right now is going through what they're describing as restaurant madness. And from now through this coming Thursday, uh, they will give 20% off of your total purchases when you mention restaurant madness. And there are 35 plus restaurants uh, that are participating and uh, I believe you can either uh, check on the City of Batavia website for the list or I believe that it, probably the Batavia Chamber of Commerce also has it there of the list of restaurants but I would encourage you to do this it's a nice way to get people to come into a restaurant and try the fair and uh, we have 35 plus that are doing it but it'll end this coming Thursday uh, at close of business. So that one, uh, and some restrictions may apply, and if uh, you get, uh, you may get that, you may get it on carryouts and you may not, so you're told to ask that if you're going to get the, the, the uh, discount because you're carrying out. So uh, we're very pleased to announce that one. I want to take just a couple minutes and talk about a couple things that will be uh, showing up in Batavia in the near future. One is, is that, as I think I've mentioned before, the Dunham Foundation, based in Aurora, has given the Batavia community a $75,000 historical sign grant in which we have a committee made up of representatives from the uh, Batavia Historical Society, the Batavia uh, Library, the City of Batavia, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. Anyway, they, we all get together and we've come up with about uh, potentially about 20 plus signs that we're going to put up. They're not cheap signs, they're all in an enclosed frame. And we're going to put them at locations that will d tell a history of the area. And then it will be followed up by a computer program that will be put together in which any play, anybody, any place in the world, I guess, will be able to dial up the Batavia History Sign Program and read the signs and understand the history a little bit better and they'll show the background of the area. And among the early ones we are doing is we're obviously doing one about Mary Todd Lincoln's stay in Batavia in 1875. And uh, we're going to do some about some of the very historic churches on Batavia Avenue. And then another one that many people don't realize is, is that in 1919, uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower came and visited Batavia as a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army and he was on a convoy that had been put together under the direction of Woodrow Wilson, who was then President of the United States, to make a cross-country trip of America from Washington, D.C. to San Francisco and seek the development then of a cross-continental highway in America. It took 62 days for this military convoy to do it but as part of the trip, uh, they came into Aurora and they got on Illinois Route 31 and they came up to Batavia and I'm sure specifically Mooseheart had just opened down in there as the orphanage for uh, homeless children, not homeless children, but orphans from uh, Moose members. And I believe there was several thousand kids down there at that moment and so they stopped the convoy right on Route 31 for a few minutes and showed some of the military equipment that was there. Then they began a trip up the hill uh, to the north. On everybody, I'm sure, is familiar with the hill that starts at the base at Moose Heart and goes up to the top of the hill by what is today the Moose Lodge entrance. And that hill at that time, I'm told, was much steeper than it is even today. So they took these, I believe, 63 military vehicles that were in the convoy and they took them up, to the, up the hill and all the water in each one of them began to shift and leak and whatever and they got to the top of the hill and the whole thing was just a big cloud of smoke from all the steam from all the vehicles. So they got information that they could come up to the intersection at Batavia Avenue and Wilson Street where the city of Batavia at that time had a city connected horse drinking trough that they could turn that on and the army could have as much water as they wanted. So, so they lumbered up the rest of the way on Batavia Avenue still spewing all this steam and they got up to the intersection and they backed all these vehicles down northbound on Batavia Avenue going south down past Main Street I'm told and so when they got up there uh, one of the men in the convoy decided that 
he was going to take charge of the intersection at Batavia Avenue and Wilson Street and move these military vehicles through and then also take care of anybody in a horse and a wagon or an early car or whatever was there. He stood in the intersection, so about almost an hour, I'm told, uh, kind of directing traffic. And when the last vehicle came through, he got on that vehicle, and that was uh, Lieutenant Colonel Dwight D. Eisenhower, who did that particular movement in Batavia in uh, July of 1919. Uh, some 41 years later, on October 25, 1960, Another presidential person, John F. Kennedy, came through Batavia on a campaign swing exactly two weeks before his election as president over Richard Nixon. And he had started the day up in uh, Libertyville at Adley Stevenson's farm, and then he went into Barrington and gave a speech, and then he went out west and came down Route 31, starting in Carpentersville. And as he came down to Batavia, there was about 1,500 people standing at the intersection at Batavia Avenue and Wilson Street. Uh, they had let the uh, high school out so the kids could see a presidential candidate. And then uh, Sam Rotolo, who was then principal of the Louise White School on the east side, took his whole school and told them they were early dismissed, but he encouraged them to go over and watch a presidential candidate. And then the, pre then the principal at McQuain School let his kids out. So there was probably well over a thousand kids standing there. We have pictures of this, and if you go on the city website, we have pictures. And we also have a short movie that was made of it with a Super 8 camera by uh, the Hubbard, uh, Jim Hubbard that showing the uh, convoy as it came through town. Uh, the Kennedy stopped, got up on top of his car, trunk and gave a speech for about a minute and 43 seconds. We have a copy of the speech so we know how long the, the uh, speech was. And then he got down in the car and rode away because there were so many people away that they didn't want to put the top up because it was starting to rain. So they got the car down in front of the next block in front of Johnson's drugstore and John F. Kennedy got out of the car to brush off his suit and when he did, Bert Johnson, who was the druggist in the drugstore, came out and says to John F. Kennedy, do you remember me? And Kennedy supposedly looked at him and said, boy, you are familiar. And then Bert Johnson said, well, I was a navigator on the LST boat in the Solomon Islands in August of 1943 when your boat got sunk and I was on the group that rescued you from the Japanese and you were hiding on an island down there. So they had a little conversation about that, and then Kennedy had to leave in a hurry and get down to Aurora, where he had a big crowd waiting for him down there. But I just thought it's interesting, and we're going to do a sign about this, that both Kennedy and Eisenhower came to Batavia and both stopped and probably stood no more than maybe 40 feet apart from one another, 40 years difference, but that's... Uh, quite an interesting story, and so we're going to tell this on one of the signs that these two president, future presidents of the United States uh, came to Batavia and both gave, did something. One directed traffic and the other gave a speech within 40, you know, 40 feet of each other. So uh, we're very, very excited about that. Uh, we've got some neat signs that we're working on and the committee has been writing and rewriting and doing all kinds of good stuff. And uh, I've been a member of the committee because I've been helping to write a lot of the history, at least digging it up as the stuff we're going to write about. So we're going to put the first section of signs up and then we're going to take a look around at other things that qualify as historical areas. And I'm sure before it's over with we'll have a lot of Batavia signed with all this stuff. And I am told that we probably have one of the more historic towns in the state of Illinois with the number of events and people who have stopped here. Obviously we'll probably have a sign for the visit of Mark Twain, and we'll have a sign for the flyover by Charles Lindbergh where he dropped a parachute because he couldn't find Mooseheart in, in the bright of a sunny day, but he could find Paris, France in the dark, as I'm told they used to say. But he dropped a parachute with a message on it, a banner that was dropped at River and Wilson. So we're going to outline all these stories of all these famous people that have come to our town, and I think many people will find it of interest. And the final note I would like to uh, make is, is that we've just, we believe we've got together all the necessary components and we are getting some federal assistance on this, but we're going to be putting a new traffic light up at the intersection of 
Prairie Street and Wilson Street. And we want that light there, specifically the state government is leaning on this because we have railroad crossings through two legs of that four-way intersection. And so there's going to be some traffic or railroad flashing gates put up at, on two legs, of one on Prairie and one on Wilson. And then there's going to be a traffic light that will be there that will work just normally most of the time if a train ever comes through. I am told the traffic light will go red for everybody and you'll just sit there and wait. But the, the uh, gates where they'll be are kind of off center of the main intersection of the street. So we don't want to put these gates up and then have half the people on the other side of where they should be and it could be a dangerous situation. So we've had to acquire some right away and whatever and that took a little while. But we've now got that pretty much all lined up and we're ready to go and uh, you'll probably I don't know if you'll see construction on that immediately, but in the near term, that will start to be constructed. So I think that's enough for me talking today. I wish everybody a good week, and uh, I hope you all are getting, some people I know are preparing to go to St. Patrick's Day celebrations in Chicago. Got relatives coming in and whatever, and so if you're a Batavian and you're going into St. Patrick's Day, have a lot of fun because I'm told that's a great place when we turn the River in downtown Chicago green in honor of the uh, Jewish, Jewish, Irish uh, relationships that uh, exist within the city of Chicago. So with that, I'll end and wish everybody a happy week.